Hi, my name is Benedict for Hi Hertz. First thing, apologies for lack of mood lighting, but for some bizarre reason, my phone won't sign into anything today. Uh, so I can't actually access my um, my fancy coloured LED light. I'm sure you can survive without the blue light. What we're looking at is Reason Studio's algorithm, which is a rather cool FM synth. FM has a funny reputation and in many ways quite well earned. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem with FM is it's largely very, very hard to program and you need a fair understanding before you feel like you're in control of it. The thing that I think is really outstanding about algorithm is how easy it makes it for really anybody. Obviously, the more you understand about how sound is created, uh, the easier it gets. But really, it's, it's as easy for anybody as it is for kind of anybody else. Um, and, and that's a really, to me, a really standout thing. While there are other synths, like we looked at um, Dext, uh, it sounds really surprisingly accurate to the, the Yamaha DX7, but yeah, I don't want to program it. You just don't. It's nasty. Uh, somebody else pointed out Aurora, uh, which is kind of similar. It is nicer and there are some cool things about it but it's still in the kind of arena where I don't necessarily feel that an FM synth should be. So algorithm has the potential downside for some people in that you need reason to run it but in terms of showing what can be done with very very nice thought about how to make the most of something we end up being able to say this is a great example of uh, of usability as well as making a synth that's actually a true joy and incredibly fast to use. Now, the other negative that people have about uh, the DX7 is, oh, well, all that, you know, tacky, glassy 80s music, man. Um, well, honestly, a lot of it was truly beautiful. Um, smooth jazz with DX7 electric pianos and what have you. So don't let your personal problems get in the way. But I'm going to point to guys who really majored in the sound of the DX7 whilst being the complete opposite. This is a, a very rushed tribute to the band Front 242, who it turns out are celebrating 40 years in the game. And they're back and I've watched some live shows and they are awesome to watch. Uh, so a little bit of a tribute with lines stolen from uh, a few of their songs using nothing but algorithm to show how the Yamaha DX7 style sound FM synthesis doesn't have to be all glassy electric pianos. Body to And again, just without the vocals. So as we see, none of that sounds like bad emulations of Knight Rider. It's a very versatile instrument. We'll quickly scoot through the sounds. And before you tell me that the, the drums are panned, yes, they are panned. It's very deliberate and actually taken from uh, one of their um, albums, Tyranny. So I just made two patches, one which was sort of kicky clicky and the other one which was snary, splatty, what have you. 
uh, and created two patterns and they actually move left and right. The bass, which is central to EBM. Has to have this sort of aggressive kind of snarl to it. It's kind of this weird noise, the guitar. Just nice, moody, broody sort of sound. Has to be sequenced and then it works. And then this string. FM is absolutely wonderful for strings and brass and a lot of other instruments because of the amount of detail you can put in. And while there are some limits with um, algorithm and detail, it's able to put, to put in a lot of detail. Let's pop this one aside for now. And we'll look at the very basics and then we'll come back and dig in a little bit more. Oh, just as housekeeping, there's an instance of Hertz delay here just to add a little bit of, a little bit of echo. Pure FM uses a sine wave. I know there are in other instruments that use some more complex waves and you can do that and you can do that in here, but this says sine wave. And that's where we start. And it's then an additive process about adding more complexity. So we're off operating on the output operator with a second one. Hear how that adds tone. And then we'll go again, we add another one. And that's three different types of sounds with minimal difference. So this is a little bit of a mouth organ harmonica kind of thing. And no, please don't write in to tell me that doesn't sound like a proper harmonica. I know it doesn't, it's not the point. It's about being able to make something that's going to sound Cowboy playing his mournful harmonica. It's going to work nicely if you know how to compose with it. And then, of course, we can do things like asking them to feedback. See here, that's adding a little bit of snarl. And with use of velocity, we can get some movement in how that performs. Now, there was no real way to get this level of delicacy and detail in sound creation before FM. That is nothing against having a massive modular with all kinds of everywhere, but the, the, the clarity, the detail, it was just not the same. This is about building. You'll notice there isn't a filter here. There are options to have filters, but this is about building the tone of your sound. So let's have a look at some patches. If we go into bras, there's the um, general sort of section. Then there's, a lot of these are going to be a little on the overlaid side. Probably should turn that off for the moment. So very capable of doing those kinds of paint strippers sorts of sounds. I have a couple of times for people uh, made clones of classic DX7 sounds using algorithm. Um, I just did the um, uh, Mr. Mr. Broken Wings. Um, previously, I have done um, that bass sound that sort of ran through everything like Ace of Bass. Um, uh, I've got the power. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, so there's, there's a fair amount of versatility here, but just understand it never sounds quite like a DX7.
bit splatty because they're just far too loud. There used to be a convention about reason not making sounds too loud, now they're all too loud. <laughs> Hard to know. This is very nice work. So it shows you how detailed uh, FM synthesis can be with, with very little actually happening. FM is super for, for pads. This is uh, not pure FM, it's using FM. Actually, no, it's not using FM, sorry. It's just, there's routing, but it's not actually FM. So that's really a form of subtractive synthesis, showing you that you can do some quite interesting subtractive synthesis. That's obviously got FM happening. clear sound but it avoids having that very hard clinical sound which some people will go oh well that's poor because it doesn't sound like a dx7 i like it because i find it works in the mix straight away without that feeling of uh, of having to try to undo some of that digital sound again that's more a subtractive synth kind of thing fm quiet Interesting. Oh, lots of pads. Keys and polyphonic. Let's see if we can uh, deal two operator. That's a classic DX kind of. Appeared on many, many records. Uh, and while some people got sick of it, it is a super sound. Brass section, I seem to recall this was quite good. Really, really nice work. Again, just shows the kind of detail that you can get. Of course, we have to... Really, really cool. Um, let's have a listen to their French horns. I don't think... just too loud it's annoying how loud the patches are these ones pluck spells fm is great for bells and metallic and like Very cool little uh, toy piano. Textures and effects. Again, FM is just super. Maybe not that one. Rhythmic stuff. Um. 
There are quite a lot of things you can do within algorithm with these constantly moving sounds, which is very cool because you can't do them in a DX. <laughs> And some percussion type stuff. Very nice for creating percussion. It's not the most ideal for it because it's not optimized for it, but it will give you some really cool stuff. There's always people asking for, how do I get the log drum sound? And I always sort of think, why did you just make it? Meat kick. I don't know whether that's called meat kick because it's meaty or in reference to meat beat manifesto. I'd be impressed if it was a ladder. That again is more a subtractive patch, but <laughs> good luck getting that done easily in most other places. A fair variety of, of patches there to give you a sense of the, the sort of scope of the sound, but basically anything that can be done in FM can be done here. And really effectively anything that can be done in subtractive can be done here as well. And then combinations thereof, should you so wish. Reason Studios. Well, there's Reason Studios, formerly known as Propeller Heads, uh, of course, famous for um, initially uh, Rebirth, which was very clever, a couple of um, TB303, 808, and 909 emulations in this little box where you could make these repetitive repeating repetitions. Uh, but it was clever software and, and it stood out in its day. And then, of course, Reason, uh, which was launched in 2000 something or other. Um, I've been using them exclusively for close to 15 years now. So some people say, oh, but you're too Reason oriented. It's like, why wouldn't I be? I like the software. Um, I don't level that accusation at people who... Uh, who do nothing about say, but say how great Reaper or Cubase or Logic or whatever Ableton is. Um, there's nothing wrong with finding a tool that you like and really digging in with it. Um, yes, you do need to have reason uh, to run this, but you don't have to work in the reason door. The reason door is not necessarily for everybody. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I actually like the things that people don't like about it because that makes it work better for me. Uh, so if you don't like the, the door itself, you can just work in the rack and have access to the whole thing. So as in one of the last reviews that I did, which was around Halion, uh, looking at Halion um, and comparing two other things, I said reason is a contender along with your usual Omnisphere, Falcon, what have you, because it is a whole lot of ability to do almost every kind of synthesis, including FM. There's a lot you can do with FM without algorithm. You can do a huge amount of FM if you understand what you're doing inside Thor. Uh, and then, of course, there's a fair amount of FM or the results of FM that you can do in Europa. But algorithm is just such a wonderful way of having put together the concepts of FM and said, here, let's go again. And this makes tremendous sense. It is $99. I, like many other people, have gotten it through some kind of a loyalty process or whatever. Cool. If you don't want, if you want the reason thing, but you don't want to pay for the thing up front, then there are subscription options should that be the path you choose to go down. Um, having been an owner, I'm funny about that, but I can also see how at 499 people would be like, well, if I'm going to be upgrading every couple of years, why don't I just subscribe? Just be aware that a lot of subscriptions, if for some reason you stop paying, you got nothing. If I stop paying, I've still got this because I own this license for as long as I've got the ability to run it. So you have to work out where you sit on it. But if you're looking for one synth that's incredibly easy to program once you understand the paradigm and can do everything from analogy, a little bit of wavetable, you can't import your own, but a little bit of wavetable uh, and the amazing, immense, broad joy that is FM when it's pretty open-minded. Uh, again, I have found nothing that actually works as well as this. Some that sound more DX70 than this, some that uh, have um, certain extra features 
but nothing that works as quickly, as easily, and in as versatile a fashion. So obviously we're getting into the good and bad. What's good is that it is super to program. We'll walk through that and show you how it works. It is tremendously versatile. That um, if you can work out what you want, you can make it here. There's, I haven't really encountered anything where I've thought, oh, and no, I couldn't get a result on that. It is there and doable. There are some interesting things in here, some kooky things in here, but from time to time they end up being like, oh, that was cool. I also very much like the um, the offsets and uh, and scaling things. So they're ways of just changing how the, 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 the overall program that you have made behaves. Uh, there's not a lot of them, but they're enough to really take a patch which is struggling to be fully playable across the keyboard or just a little too much in some way, like this, the release is too long, you can just move that very easily, so nicely thought through. Of course, we do need to go through the negatives. Yes, you need reason to run this. Without reason, it's not going to happen for you. Uh, but it doesn't mean you have to work in the reason door. You can just use a reason rack inside your own door, and it's proving to be really pretty darn stable for most people. We do need to be honest, this does not sound exactly like a DX7. There used to be a PX7, but Reason withdrew it not long before this. One wonders if they didn't get a, a little phone call at, at uh, 2 a.m. from um, Steinberg or, or Yamaha sort of saying, yeah, we'd rather you didn't. Um, it had a good reputation amongst DX7 people because they said it was surprisingly accurate. Oddly enough, all the time that it was out there, I never tried it, didn't get it. Um, not unhappy because I've got this now, and while it's not perfect for a DX7, it covers almost anything I could practically need to do FM-wise. The envelopes are a minor disappointment, and small is the issue. Uh, Europa has this tremendous set of um, MSEX, but they occupy this part of the screen which would have meant it needed to be an even bigger device, which would have become problematic, wouldn't have fitted on the screen. They've given us these little curves, which are interesting. They sit in the, the kooky, sometimes really useful, sometimes not, doesn't matter. Each of these operators has its own envelope. They're just an ADSR. I'm not particularly concerned that they aren't some sort of ADDSR or something or other. My negative with this is small, but sometimes it's just a little hard to sort of get to where you are. Things are just a little cramped. Of course, there's the shift key. And of course, there's also no way to say, can I move several things at once? Uh, so it's, it's just an inevitability with such a detailed instrument. Again, I say, make it a feature of how you program it, not a not a real negative, but you may find that your um, that your envelopes feel just a little. Also, when you instance a, a device or an, or an operator, sorry, when you instance an operator, the release is set to automatically off, um, and that just means you have to change it. But for all the other things that it does, it, it's sure not a problem. So now let's look through the features and how it works. We'll pop back on our echo. We will go to reset device. Yay! In it. We have that sine wave. How it works is obviously we have these nine slots. They are labeled one, two, three across the bottom. I always think top to bottom, so I'd rather they were labeled one, two, three. Uh, Cool if there was an option inside, but Reason doesn't do options because it doesn't really suit how things work, and that's fair enough. Yes, there is a randomizer. Uh, I think we need to have several operators on board. And it can set certain things up to be altered. And you can pick and choose how many things actually get altered. Algorithm really means that you get everything. So if you 
and you can set how much it varies. So we can go, oh, I only want it mildly different or go wild. Oh, that is nice. That is really nice. I'd be really pleased to make that one myself. So from time to time, if you really are a little bored or whatever, you can use the random function. It's not really a thing I ever use. I mostly forget it's there. I'm always busy crafting things by hand. The way it works, as we said, we've got these slots. This one will be auto-populated. Each of these can be little modules or operators can be set to go to the output or not. You can choose that here or here. You can turn modules on and off, but you can't directly alter a module from one to another. We have to turn it off, turn it to a filter. If we have changed the envelope, it tends to actually keep its memory. That's interesting. We can pick something up and drag it to somewhere else. And we can wire things. If we put something in automatically, it will tend to be wired. But if not, it will go, OK, and keep the wiring. So we've got wiring there. We've got wiring here. We can wire anything to anywhere, which is one of the huge differences. There are and have been FM synths that use matrix matrixes, so a whole lot of knobs. And so you've got to do the X and Y and OK, I'll turn the level there. And they're, they're, they are cool. They're interesting. But this is truly fascinating because it's like a modular synth, only FME. So we can send one thing to another. And as you saw before, we can send something to itself. Now, FM works. Some kind of scary maths, which we are totally going to ignore, because while maths is relevant, it's only explaining what we already know. So what happens is that each operator, each one of these, when it's sent to another one, is actually modifying the other. So it multiplies one by the other, but we're not going to do math. We're just going to do the thought that OK, we've got this innocent, I'll turn these down, we've got this innocent sine wave behaving itself, being very bland, and and that changes the timbre. It actually makes it richer, brighter. It's adding overtones. So, Here we've got nothing. Adding overtones. Yes, everything does happen in real time here. It's just that one had a thing to close it down. So this one is operating on that one, exerting pressure on it, making it have more overtones, get brighter. And then we've got this one wired up so that it's going to make this one brighter, which then goes to the first one. And then there's the frequency, which is actually the harmonic overtone scale. At really stupidly high numbers, yes, we can get some, some bounce back, but Reason's actually very good at handling that. Reason never went into the oversampling thing simply because they had some sort of way of band limiting in the first place. It might change the sound, but not in any way that's going to cause you any actual problems. If you feel like, oh, well, that's not as bright as I'd like it to be, use an EQ, problem solved. So as you see, we're getting a pretty complex sort of sound. And then, of course, that feedback, which just turns into noise, ultimately. So noise is not necessarily a, a bounce back. 
it's just an inevitability that sooner or later if you multiply everything by everything else you get a billion and a billion in um, audio terms is noise so and then by enveloping these sounds. Yes, they can tend to be a little too glassy, and if you feel that's the problem, then you can fly in a filter. Let's take the output from there to there, turn that one to an actual output, raise our filter. And the filters are simple, but work nicely. If we wanted that to be a bit more interesting, we could take our routing, undo it, send it to there. So now it's going through a shaper. Saturation, power. If we wanted to sort of brighten that up, pull some of the, the low out, then and of course use resonance in the process. Makes quite a nice bass sound, all on its little lonesome, without having to have that. But we could pull back. get a very nice feel of movement inside there because we've got a lot going on even though you don't necessarily consciously hear it in that kind of we're hearing that filter with a little bit of resonance moving through that material there is also a uh, an oscillator sound form which we will again put through a filter, the same filter, see some of the settings have been kept from what I had before, and they work through the usual uh, analogs type things, assigned to noise module is Really very cool, simple, but works really well. And then some of these sorts of things. So if we were to take, actually, let's just pull that out because it was FMing. I forgot it was FMing the whole time. So that's just pure wavetable stuff. And we FM that. We get an interesting sort of result. Very simply, how it works, we just pile things up as it suits us. There's absolutely nothing wrong with bringing in FM operators from the side. Let's just undo that one and bring this row down here. 
let's just pull that down. If we want that to be more basic, we can go half. overdo the overtones and initially you will find that everything just tends to be hard and bright and clangy but we can hear a transition there as we've got this next sound coming in And then of course we've got access to our modulation. It's interesting that they've provided a noise source so we can provide noise to overall pitch. So adding that little bit of noise instantly takes away a lot of the, oh, it's a digital synth kind of thing. We can also apply that to any of these frequencies. What's that? Number six, let's say. Our LFOs. And we apply that to pitch, which is overall pitch, because if we apply it to only one operator, the tuning between the operators starts to become a bit interesting, which we will look at later. But this applies it to everything. And then we can use one of these envelopes, let's say five, to scale. So envelope five here, we can now use that to scale. able to build up this tremendous amount of detail in our sounds. Of course we've then got access to effects on board. The EQ is a little bit more detailed than uh, those normally in the reason stuff, but it's fundamentally the same thing. If you're looking for more detail, then simply push in your detail band. Sometimes you're just going to want to roll things off a bit. There's then this resonator, which is most unusual. It's basically an impulse response, which you can apply and re-pitch, and then just choose how long it resonates for. In some situations, it's useful. In others, it's just weird. You can, of course, reorder any effects. We've got our distortion algorithms, which are very nice. They're, they're meant to be soft more than brutal. But if we get into some of these, then they do get a bit crushy. So if you are looking to have a little bit more DX7-ism um, or DX100-ism or something like that, then adding just a little bit of this will add some of that harder digital edge to what you are doing. Phaser Flanger Chorus. FM tends to love chorusing. Compressor, it's okay. Delay, unfortunately, does not modulate. And it's always set to pan to one side. I mean, it's assuming ping pong, but a bit annoying. And a reverb. 
I don't use them a lot, uh, but they are there and they're useful. Probably more for patch makers when I patch made for this instrument, then yes, they were. Um, there was plenty of use of those effects, but in a mix I'd probably replace them. So we can get these beautiful sorts of pad sounds and just the more we push, the more we can do interesting things. So we've now got six going to its output. And that's how we get the whole system working. And it's just by rearranging those modules, what's feeding what, that we get truly interesting results. So like we could say, take seven to there. That's interesting, we hear that sound rise. something very cool going on in the background of that sound. You want to spend some time working out how that got there. And then it makes itself incredibly useful for all kinds of things. These curves can be run as steps or as, so we can assign one to uh, something and it's going to get all manner of interest. <laughs> And that, that is really, really very, very useful. The bottom line, it's the easiest FM synth that I have ever used, and I've tried plenty of them. It's not 100% DX7, but they've created their own idea of what could be done with FM, and then given us the options of adding a different kind of oscillator, just like a, 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 um, an analog and basic wavetable, along with that shaper. Uh, therefore, there's really nothing that we can't actually get out of this. It's quite stunning in many ways as to what we can achieve. Hope you've enjoyed this quick uh, door change, phone problem still. Uh, it might be time for something new, I think. Uh, I've tried to keep this fairly short, so rather than going to absolutely everything that can be done with algorithm, really just to let you know, there is so much of everything that can be done with this uh, and that if you are really wanting to dig into FM uh, that it's probably the the nicest way of doing it um, even if it does mean looking at reason but it might be that you're already looking at reason for other purposes uh, and go look that that would be the killer app for me in which case that's that's a good position to be in because you know where you want to go um, if not that's great then it just shows you hey something that that's really difficult to use can suddenly change your perspective just by you know changing perspective on it um, if what you saw here made a little bit more sense then you might suddenly find it easier to use uh, aurora or dex or fm8 or citrus assuming you can still access citrus if you're not a, a fruity kind of a fella uh, if you have any broad questions uh, hit subscribe and fire them on down below my name again is benedict for uh, i give up benedict for higher hertz uh, higherhertz.com there's a uh, different stream of information and of course you can get your sticky fingers on that hertz delay that you saw doing um, echo duty for us here most important thing you keep having a great day